How's it going everyone, it's me Vivi and welcome back to some Kingdom Hearts. Alright, so for this video let's go over the types of Keyblades. I think this is one interesting topic which isn't brought up that often. So let's go. If you ever paid close attention to Xehanort's reports in Birth by Sleep, number 6 is where our focus lies. There are three families of Keyblades. The Keyblades of Light, we wield, Keyblades of Darkness, and Keyblades of Heart. The first and second families differ only in origin. Keyblades of Darkness are found in the Realm of Darkness, and our counterparts to the Keyblades we use in the Realm of Light. The third type of key, the Keyblade of Heart, came into existence when the world was reorganized, after the Keyblade War. Without this key, Kingdom Hearts is forever beyond a person's reach. Only by gathering together seven hearts of pure light, hearts completely devoid of darkness, may one forge a Keyblade of Heart and open the door to Kingdom Hearts. And as stated before, opening this door arguably gives that person control over all worlds and all people. So Keyblades of Light, Keyblades of Darkness, and Keyblades of Heart. Let's start with the third one, Keyblade of the heart. As Xehanort stated, this third category came to existence after the Keyblade War. Now does this have anything to do with the Keyblade? The blade which coexisted with the true Kingdom Hearts, which people fought over. If you've watched cutscenes from Kingdom Hearts Key, which is now no more, we got Union Cross now, which was formerly known as Unchained Key, the Keyblade wasn't shown. All we knew about the story of Key was that people fought over looks, over light. But as for the Keyblade, which was mentioned in Birth by Sleep, coexisting with Kingdom Hearts that was never shown. Why wasn't it shown or when will it be shown? We don't know, it doesn't really matter. Alright, let's go with what we learned in Dream Drop Distance. The Keyblade, which coexisted with Kingdom Hearts. It's split into 7 pure lights and 13 darknesses, something which Xehanort had lost sight of. Well, lost sight of how to truly reach his goal. He said that he acted rashly, so eventually he came up with the plan to try and bring back those 7 lights and 13 darknesses. The way he went at it first, he used a heart of pure darkness and a heart of pure light. He split Ventus' heart into light and darkness. The Keyblade did get forged, but it was a failure. Now do these seven lights have anything to do with the Keyblade of Heart? Yes. Xehanort used Maleficent to gather the seven princesses of light. Seven pure lights were known as the seven princesses eventually. According to Xehanort, those seven lights would have been required to reforge the true Keyblade. Now in the process, Seven Pure Lights created the Keyblade of Heart. The only one we've seen is in Kingdom Hearts 1, the one Dark Riku wielded. It doesn't have a keychain, and a keychain we think it represents a world, a connection a wielder has with that type of world. This Keyblade of Heart doesn't seem to follow that rule, it's made of seven pure lights. So this Keyblade of Heart is not directly connected to the world, but to people's hearts instead. And not only one heart in particular. When it comes to one heart in particular representing a specific keychain, a great example of this would be the Oath Keeper and the Oblivion. Since Roxas is connected to Sora, he's his nobody, the memory of Riku and Kairi are also connected to him. So thanks to those memories, he transformed his two Keyblades into the Oblivion, which represents Riku, and the Oath Keeper, which represents Kairi. Also, don't forget in Kingdom Hearts 1, when Kairi gave Sora her lucky charm, the Wayfinder, Sora got the Oath Keeper, which represents Kairi's light, and the Oblivion, which represents Riku's darkness. So the seven pure lights, the princesses, are these the seven pure lights from the very start? What I mean by this, are these the actual lights from the Keyblade which shattered? Not exactly, and this was explained by Yen Sid. Seven pure lights rebuilt the world, and those pure lights come from children. And the seven lights from the Keyblade protected those seven pure hearts, who now belong to the seven princesses. So what I'm getting at is, the seven pieces of light from that Keyblade did not directly go to the seven princesses. They first guarded seven pure lights, and then eventually with time, Time, whatever's left of pure light, it went inside seven princesses, which Xehanort believed was the power needed to forge the Keyblade, but that was a failure as well, Sora was in his way. Maybe some of you thought that the lights from the Keyblade went directly in the hearts of seven princesses, but that is not the case, this was explained by Yen Sid. I'll play the cutscene for you guys. The Keyblade Wars of yore plunged the true Kingdom Hearts into darkness and the Keyblade was shattered. But the light still shining in the hearts of children rebuilt the world that we know today. And the light from the broken Keyblade was then divided into seven to protect the number of pure hearts in the world. 
Seven pure lights. They're the princesses of heart. Indeed. Those seven pure hearts form the very source of all light in the world. So, without these seven lights today, no one can open the door to Kingdom Hearts, which lies deep within the Realm of Darkness, the true Kingdom Hearts I'm talking about. Not the artificial one from Kingdom Hearts 1, which was created using the Hearts of Worlds. Now having seven lights combined gives one the ability to use the Keyblade to open the door to darkness. As for this Keyblade of Heart, it is unknown if anyone can wield it. We only saw Dark Riku and Sora wield it. Usually when someone has a strong heart, they can wield the Keyblade, but as for this one, the nature is completely different. We're talking about seven different hearts. Okay, but dude, what about Terra releasing Aurora's heart and Xehanort releasing his own heart? They don't have Keyblades of Heart. Actually, this was also explained in Xehanort's reports. He explained that Keyblade Masters can release hearts. Although Terra didn't receive the title Master, he had the power in him. A Keyblade wielder reaches a point where they have enough strength in their heart to release the heart of another. But good Keyblade Masters, well, Keyblade wielders in general, decide not to interfere with that kind of nature, meddling with other people's hearts. Now let's move on to Keyblades of Light and Keyblades of Darkness. The name says it, Light as in Realm of Light and Darkness as in Realm of Darkness. Some of you probably heard the term Keyblade of Worlds Hearts, something like that. I believe there are two subcategories one being the Realm of Light and the other Darkness. Now according to Namura, the Keyblade of Darkness does not represent evil, they're just counterparts. Counterparts which are needed to seal the door to Darkness. Keyblade of Darkness on one side, and the Keyblade of Light on the other. This was also re-summarized in 0.2. The Realm of Light at least is capable of gifting one with a certain type of keychain, as a result of their good intentions. For example, saving the world. As for Mickey, he has the Keyblade of the Realm of Darkness, the Kingdom Key D. As for his keychain having his shape, I'm going to say he was given that because he was the first one to find the Keyblade. He became its owner. As for the Kingdom Key, that blade was supposed to belong to Riku. Why does it have Mickey's keychain? Well, let's just say due to the connection with Sora, it was a manifestation of that. Mickey was the one talking to him and dive into the heart. Remember that. Mickey was also capable to communicate with Riku and the Realm of Darkness. When Riku lost his heart in the Realm of Darkness, usually when people lose their hearts, that's the location they go to. Okay, then why does Riku still have his body in the Realm of Darkness if only his heart went there? Well, due to his strong will of finding Sora and Kairi, he was capable of keeping it. And Mickey had the power to communicate through hearts. By the way, the Kingdom Key D and the Kingdom Key are not pieces of the Keyblade. We don't truly know what the real blade looks like. Yes, this might sound funny, but despite what we saw in Birth by Sleep, we still don't know what it looks like. Maybe the blade we saw in that game was another manifestation of Sora's connection to Ventus. Since Vanita took Sora's old look due to that connection, the blades we see on the Keyblade are the blades which suit Sora's heart in the future. Maybe this one sounds a bit far-fetched, but I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, hey, why wasn't the Keyblade shown in Kingdom Hearts Key? I mean, people were fighting over it. It coexisted with Kingdom Hearts. Why is that? Why was it absent? Did Square Enix think, hey, we don't want to really show what the Keyblade truly looks like? I mean, who knows? Now, these Keyblades of Light are all the Keyblades we've seen, pretty much, in the games. Apart from the one from the Realm of Darkness. Even Xehanort's Keyblade is a Keyblade of Light, which originally belonged to the Master of Masters, which found its way to Xehanort eventually. And that Keyblade, which is, well, no name, it doesn't really have a name, it's the oldest Keyblade, before the war we're talking about. And yes, Xehanort confirms that his Keyblade is light. If you reread his statement in report number 6, there are three families of Keyblades, the Keyblades of Light we wield, alright? We. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you have any sort of questions, leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivian, and thank you so much for watching.